Hi, and welcome to this uh, tutorial on creating a multi-tier CA hierarchy in AGBCA. This is part of a series of video tutorials, so make sure to watch our other videos for more information on how to set up a complete PKI with AGBCA. Let's start. I would start by creating certificate profiles for my two CAs. First, I will use the already existing my root CA profile to clone that and use as a basis for my new root CA profile. And I will call this my PKI root CA profile. And I will edit this and make the change to use elliptic curve keys instead of RSA keys. And the curve I will allow is the P256 curve. And that's here. And everything else I will leave as it was in this uh, previous profile. Next, I'm also going to create a profile for my sub CA and I will use the built in sub CA profile as a template, clone this one and name it my PKI sub CA profile. And on this one, I will make some more changes from the template. Uh, I will also only allow elliptic curve and the P256 curve for this profile. I will set the signature algorithm to be inherited from the root CA. And the validity here will be half of what it is for my root. My root is using 30 years, so this one will use 15 years validity. For my sub CA, I will add a path length constraint and set that to zero. And this means that this uh, sub CA cannot issue any further sub CAs beneath it. So it can only issue identity certificates. My key usages I will leave as default. And here, if uh, I were to use a certificate policy for the certificates I'm issuing, I could add this exten extension here, but I will not use that uh, in this example. I will, however, add a CRL distribution point and uh, configure this to use a CA defined default. So what this means is that instead of defining the CRL distribution point here, I will set a value in my root CA and use that one instead. And that means that if my root CA were to issue certificates with multiple profiles, I would just need to define it in one location in the CA itself. And same for authority information access and OCSP locator and the CA issuer, I will use CA defined values. OCSP is where OCSP service can be located and CA issuer is where the issuing CA, so the root CA certificate can be downloaded from. Finally, I will disable LDAP DN ordering for this certificate. It just controls how the ordering of DN components are made. Save this one. Next, I will need to create my CA keys, and I will do that in crypto tokens and create, first of all, a crypto token for my root CA and call this one my PKI root CA crypto token. I will use soft tokens in this example. So that means that the keys are stored in the database encrypted with the password that I specify here. For my root, I will not allow auto activation. So that means that in order for the root to be active, I have to manually uh, apply this password after a restart or after disabling this crypto token. Then I'm going to generate my three CA keys, starting with the CA signing key, which I will call my PKI root CA sign key and give it a number. And as I defined this to use the P256 curve in the certificate profile, that's what I have to use here. Then I'm going to generate the CA encryption key. So I'll name this to be the my PKI root CA encrypt key. And for this, I will use an RSA key. And this key would be used if I were to do any kind of encryption operations needed by the CA, for example, key recovery. But uh, 
it will likely not be used. And then I also need a test key for this crypto token so that EGBCA can test to see that the crypto token has been unlocked and is accessible. And for this, I want to use the same kind of key that the CA signing key is using, so the P256 curve elliptic curve key. Okay, I will go back to crypto tokens and create a new one, this time for the sub CA. So I'll call it my PKI sub CA crypto token. Again, it will be of type soft, but this time with auto activation enabled. So EGPCA will save this password and reapply it after a restart so that the CA is always available. I'll generate the same three keys for the sub CA. And the same kind of key algorithms. So for the signing key, P256 elliptic curve key. For the encryption key, an RSA4296 key. And a test key also of a P256 curve. Now that I have my certificate profiles and my CA keys, I can combine these and create the certification authorities. And I will do that by going to certification authorities in the menu and start by creating my root CA. I will name the CA my PKI root CA G1. Create this. And here I need to start by assigning the crypto token that contains the CA keys. So my PKI root CA crypto token. Select a signing algorithm that this CA will use. And I want to use SHA-512 with ECDSA. Then I need to map the keys for their intended usages. The default key should point to the encryption key. The search sign key should point to the sign key. The key encrypt key will reference the default key and the test key is looking at the test key. Then I will configure my CA root CA subject DM and this will be my PKI root CA G1 and I will add a organization and set that to key factor community. I will add a country SE also for Sweden. This is a self-signed CA and it will use the MyPKI root CA profile that I just defined. The validity as specified in the profile should be 30 years and I'm not using any kind of certificate policy in this example. I will disable the LDAP DN ordering to use the more common X509 ordering. And here I can also control the size of serial numbers that uh, this uh, CA will create. What I will configure here is a CRL expire period of three months so that I don't need to manually renew these uh, CRLs too often. And uh, these other values are used if uh, the issue interval and overlap time, uh, if we have automatic CRL issuing, but I will not use that for the root. So I'll just set those to zero. I'm also not using Delta CRLs, so I will leave that at zero. And here under the default CA defined validation data is where I can define the values that uh, profiles that uh, are issued by the CA will put into locations like serial distribution point, OCSP service uh, locator and CA issuer locator. And for the serial distribution point, I will add a URL pointing to HTTP slash my PKI slash CRLs slash my PKI root CA G1 dot CRL. For OCSP, I will use HTTP slash my PKI slash OCSP and CA issuer will use HTTP my PKI slash certs slash my PKI 
root cag1.cert. And these are nice looking URIs and not something that EGBCA exposes uh, on its own. So I will need to set up some kind of reverse proxy with URL rewriting if I want to target EGBCA for these services. With all that done, let's click on create and have the root CA created. And then we can create the sub CA, which will be named my PKI sub CA G1. And we do the same process of starting by mapping the correct crypto token signature algorithm. And here I will use SHA-256 with ECDSA for the sub CA and map the keys for their correct key usages. Then I'm going to set the subject DM that I want for the sub CA, my PKI sub CA G1, organization key factor community, and country SC. And this, instead of being self-signed, I will have it signed by the local root CA, my PKI root CA G1. And the profile will be the my PKI sub CA profile that I just created. And the validity, according to the profile, should be 15 years. I don't want LDAP DN ordering here. And uh, next, I will here also define my CRL data. And for this one, I want to have a CRL expire period of three days instead. And for the sub CA, I want to have automatic CRL issuing and I will set the issue interval to be one day. And that means that a new CRL is created one day after the previous CRL was uh, created. If I instead were to use overlap time, I could specify how long in advance of expiring a new CRL should be created. But since I have an issue interval, I don't need to specify an overlap time. And then I'm also gonna define this CRL um, distribution point the default data to later be used in profiles uh, issued by the sub CA. And here the URL will be my PKI slash CRLs slash my PKI sub CA g1.crl. OCSP locator will be the same as for the root, my PKI slash OCSP. And the CA issuer default URI will be my PKI slash certs slash my PKI sub CA G1 dot cert. And then I can go ahead and create the sub CA. And with that done, I've created my two tier PKI hierarchy and uh, I'm all done. So please join us in our next videos where we will start issuing identity certificates. Thank you for watching.